is episode 9, Tower of God cut content by Annie News for the team of betrayal. Let's get it. With all the lies and deceit that happened during the second hide and seek test, Team B may as well have just been called Team Betrayal. I mean, the Spare Bears betrayed Huts, then turned on the rest of the team. And Can you call it betrayal? Paracule and the revolutionaries, bro, they're just too stupid. Or maybe they're just too smart and I just don't get it. Turned on the rest of the team. Endodice deceived the fishermen, Hope took Rachel hostage, and Bam even betrayed Endodice's feelings. All of which was meant to showcase a single truth about those who choose to climb the tower. Everyone's a manipulative sociopath, just like in Colossum of the Elite. Everyone is willing to give up something if it means achieving their own personal goals. Alright. When it comes down to it, everyone taking the test was Even pretty much the same. Willing to go to whatever lengths in order to make it to that next stage. The only thing that differed between them was what they desired. That's a message that will become a lot more clear as we take a look at everything the anime missed out on. Especially when we get to the parts involving Endodice and Bam. So, let's begin. But first, unless no ad read here. Episode 9. No the ad. The One-Horned Ogre. Covering chapter 43 to chapter 51 of the webtoon. Last time we left off- One-Horned Ogre. Is that supposed to be Endorsey then? Because she does have a horn. Oh, Bam's team it's was her. about to begin their hide-and-seek test. Because Endodice had taken leadership and separated the fishermen from the rest of the groups, the Spear Bearers wanted to lead a revolution that would serve to highlight themselves over everyone else. Was this the beginning of the Paracule Revolution? Like, when did the Spear Bearer Revolution start happening? I swear to God, one episode, they just started to declare themselves as a different faction. I'm like, what the fuck? What, when did you guys show up? But like, this was around when it happened. It was a ridiculous plan that involved attempting to capture the Ranker. A task they should know by now was practically impossible. But even knowing that, they still wanted everyone else to bait themselves so that they could be put into a position that would benefit them the most. So that's what Hutz was having to put up with. Okay. At around the same time, Serena was giving Ho a little background behind her motivations to climb the tower. What the anime didn't quite explain though was just how much of an effect the people around her had on her overall perspective. At Serena? First, her desire to become a ranker combined with the rage from her past losses overwhelmed any sense of self she previously had. That's why during the first test she was able to kill without hesitation. At least that made her feel as if she was regaining control over her life. But as the- And then she felt like she got washed and she retired. Serena's story is actually so sad and kind of beautiful, I guess. Huh? Like her entire character arc was like finished in season one. And it's like, damn, she really just like leaving, huh? But it's, but it's kind of to portray like not everyone can be like this main character, this important character with like incredible potential to keep climbing, you know? Serena is like a depiction of like the average person that realizes that maybe it's just not cut out for them. The tests continued. Something began to change as she became closer to the people around her. It's only Sad. after she watched her friends from Team A work so hard to pass the test that she realized how she truly got to where she was now. <laughs> Luck. So, when she thought about having to use them as stepping stones to get up the tower, well, that was something that she just couldn't accept. It was in direct contrast to Ho, who could be seen as someone that fell into a similar situation, but- Serena felt that stepping over others was not something she wanted to do in a moral sense, and she decided not to do it. I thought that it was like a lack of- potential or like she sees her limits and gave up i didn't realize that there was more about this like manipulation and using others as like a tool that was preventing her from climbing the tower came out with the opposite mindset he too lost everything he had but unlike serena he was actually willing to sacrifice others in order to achieve his own goals which sounds kind of based but at the same time i still hate ho because skill issues this was a mentality that he felt everyone should have accepted once they entered the tower just as Kun had said in the past, climbing the tower simply isn't possible without leaving others behind. That's just the way it is. Some people are willing to accept that, and some just can't. And Bomb will be the main character that breaks the traditions, and somehow the main character logic will be, No, we can all climb the tower together! Is, is that gonna happen? Switching back to Huts, after taking care of the Spare Bearers, he began to sense a strange aura of fury approaching through the Shinsu. Oh. Only Quant would be capable of such an intimidating presence. The thing is, it didn't make sense for him to be so angry considering that he just beat Team A. It was something that Hats didn't really have time to worry about since Quant would immediately engage from the darkness. Now, the ensuing bite was meant to further showcase Quant's exceptional power as a ranker. 
Hats, who was one of the top duelists out of the regulars, could only understand after a direct encounter just how outclassed he really was. He now fully understood that rankers are a completely different species all on their own. I mean, it's like comparing beings that climb the tower versus people in the tutorial phase, right? Like, think about like a video game where you have endgame players with endgame rating equipment just best in slot decked out. And then you have, like, brand new characters just showing up in Tutorial Village, right? It didn't matter what he was before because Quant was clearly no longer human. The way he moved was something far superior to anything any human could accomplish. Now, the events in between this fight involving Indodacy and Bum played out a little bit differently than how we were shown in the anime. This whole scene was meant to further develop the relationship between the two of them, something that I feel the anime didn't quite do justice, especially since it becomes a very prominent plot point later on. So, while Endordesi was leading her group of fishermen, Bam seemed a little bit concerned about something else other than the test. Hmm? It made her wonder if something was wrong. You see, she specifically chose Bam to be by her side for a couple of reasons. Because he's One hot? Was so that she could teach him a few crucial lessons, and the other was because she had faith in his abilities. The thing is, Bam didn't even have confidence in his own. He personally couldn't understand why it was that Endordesi chose him to be in her group. It was a mindset that she found to be weak. But at the same time, it was one that she couldn't scold him for because Why? she once felt that same way as well. This oh, the backstory of her, like, you know, deciding to kill everyone else so she can eat the nice foods. This is what led her to share her backstory. That was a as fucked up backstory. And Dorothy was once the youngest and weakest girl within one of the ten families. Because of this, all she ever got to eat for months was cold, stale bread. But that all changed when her talent finally manifested she was able to use it to beat a much bigger and older girl. The resulting dinner was so Better food. that it spurred an insatiable curiosity. You are an insane person. I've already made a video <laughs> about how stupid you are. Keep making videos. Keep, keep wasting your time. Keep wasting your time devoting yourself to me. I live rent-free in your head. You will never accomplish anything in your life. And I just want you to know that you're pathetic and everyone that's watched the original video already knows you're wasting your time. You should honestly move on with your life. It's actually sad. Anyways, let's go back. As to what the other males ahead of her would taste like. Sure enough, after only a few days, Endodacy was able to eat anything at that table. Now, the point of this story was to give Bam an idea of what was necessary to achieve one's own goals. But like, he is so different. Bam is like, not the type to ever approach that. Maybe his personality will shift. You know what? That would be so nice if Bam would just have a complete different personality shift from season 1 to season 2. I want him to become a fucking cold, ruthless dude. That's willing to just climb and say, I don't like Rachel, I don't need her anymore. But I don't, that's, 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 uh, that's not him. Bam is like, too nice and innocent and pure. That innocence is something that everyone else is like, even saying. Even Shibisu was like... You know, that kid still has something that we all lost one long time ago. It's, it's the innocence, it's the purity, but like, I just don't think Bama's ever gonna be like that, man. So, to make sure that he understood what she was saying, Endodacy then asked Bam how he thought she was able to accomplish this feat. Bam naively responded in a way that Endodacy thought was a joke, but it was actually just Bam being his usual innocent self. Before the conversation could go any further, their lighthouse then sent them the message of Hudson countering the ranker. This was what Endodacy was waiting for in order to set her plan in motion. She immediately pulled out one of her mini needles, disabled the lighthouse, then marked a clear perimeter around Did herself she? and the I don't remember that. It was a small circle in which there was only one rule. Anyone who tries to leave will die. Damn. At first, the guy who was sucking up to her was a bit confused. But things became very clear when she quickly laid him out in a single hit. I remember her putting her heels to a bunch of dudes' faces and pushing them down. And then, uh, basically beating that knight guy who had the ignition weapon and stealing it. That's when Bam finally figured out the answer to Endodacy's previous question. What she was doing to these fishermen was the exact same thing that she did to the girls of her family to secure the food at the table. I mean, did you have to kill them all though? <laughs> like, I don't think the other girls had to die for you to, you know, enjoy the nice meal all by yourself, right? It was just like a ranking system, but... Like, and Dorsey, and she is still like a... She's hundreds and hundreds of years old, but Shinsu somehow is able to, you know, uh, keep your body and mind fixed at a certain state so she's still like a child or something. I don't know how that shit works, but like, her mentality, it seems kind of naive. 
kind of very absolute like this is the only way to do it and bomb will probably show that there's other ways to do it but if you're in this kind of situation of survival and you see that other people are you know getting ahead and this is your only way out then i, I could empathize and understand like why she had to do this just as that had led to her becoming a princess eliminating the other fishermen was the easiest way to secure a spot in the final test so after having been just betrayed the other fishermen believed that bam was in on her plan as well it led ryan to try to attack him first but Endotasi just sent him flying to the edge of the circle once again. Got a name, it Ryan. It was an excessive display of force that was intended to teach Bam another lesson. What Endotasi wanted him to see was exactly what it took Brutality. to the tower. Cruelty. To see what every person was willing to do in pursuit of their own ambitions. If Bam was willing to go this far for Rachel, then Endotasi would allow him to leave the circle. That was her condition. Is that's interesting how the the anime just cut all that stuff out. I never once thought that Endorsey was trying to like teach Bama a lesson. I thought she'd just be sick. But the, the webtoon is like an actual lesson. It's like you can't leave the circle until like you have the resolve to kill. See, up until now, Bam had participated in this test the least out of anyone. Unlike everyone else who were all committed to climbing the tower, Bam hadn't yet chosen what he wanted to do. He wasn't someone who could plan a betrayal like Ho and Dodacy or the Spare Bearers. And he- OR RACHEL! Actually, she didn't plan it. Yu Han Sung and Hua Ryan, they all planned it and Rachel just... She didn't do shit, she just existed. He wasn't someone like Hatsu who could willingly sacrifice himself for the success of his team. Bam was simply someone that lacked the conviction or resolve to establish what he himself wanted. He was so caught up in following a single person that he wasn't even able to decide for himself what it was he needed to do. This was the exact thing that bothered Endodacy the most. You see, Endodacy knows that Bam is aware Michelle is actually Rachel. Yep. Back when Bam was trying to convince her to sign the friends list, the very first name at the top of the list was actually Rachel's. Worst. This was Bam's Ugh. way of indirectly telling her that he knows who Michelle really is. So, when Endodacy met Rachel back in the bathrooms a few chapters That's back, a good scene. she left with the vague phrase of, should I tell? Initially, we thought that this was her thinking that she should tell Bam that Michelle is Rachel. He knew. But it was actually the other way around. And Dodacy wanted to tell Rachel that Bam already knew who she was. Yeah. She wanted Rachel to know that Bam was only acting. To <laughs> and you don't have to put your hood on and just be all emo. Just come join us. So that he was putting on a guise of ignorance because he believed that she didn't like him following her. This was the entire picture. And only someone who was acquainted with both sides would be able to see it as a whole. God, this shit's so frustrating. Just seeing this poor ass, dumb ass puppy just follow her master along, and then the master doesn't even want the puppy. But Endorse is like, bro, come on. Like, you're better than this. Is he better than this, though? I don't know. He's just too naive. He's too innocent. You know what? Fuck the purity, man. Strip all that shit away. It's time for this boy to become a man. We, we need this kid to become a hardened warrior, man. So, for someone as straight- That's exactly, I hope, what they're doing since season 1 to season 2. If there is a time skipping, which is most likely looking, so if you look at the cover picture, right? Whatever training that they're doing down there at the bottom of the ocean with Yu Han Sung and Hua Ryun, they, they better be, they better be making him to a sigma. It's like, no more simping for Rachel! She trashed, she betrayed you, but it's like, I just feel like season 2 is just gonna be a repeat of season 1. With a set of different tests and stuff, but at the end of the day, just chasing after Rachel and this time to ask her, Why did you push me? Oh, if, if that's the entire thing. You know what would be really sad? What if we get pushed again? <laughs> what if she just reject we get to there? The final episode. Final episode of season two is like, he's finally there with Rachel somehow. And he's like, Why did you push me? And then she's like, <laughs> walks away. And we get cucked again? No, they wouldn't do that, right? They would They would never do that. I, I'm gonna be so fucking upset, but the reactions are gonna be very entertaining of me just getting angry. Straight forward as Endodacy to see both <laughs> Rachel and Bam act under these serious misconceptions, well, it was really starting to bother her. That's why she was working with Kun to set the stage for everything to be cleared up. Anyway, Ryan and Hong Chun Hua were trying to figure out the best way to take on Endodacy. Hong was convinced Ignition that he weapon. could end the fight in a single strike if Ryan was able to buy him some time. But instead, Ryan just pushed Hong forward and tried to run away. Of course, Endodacy quickly caught up and knocked him down before he could even leave the circle. That's when Bam stepped in to try and stop her. Even though this guy had tried to attack him only moments ago, Bam was still convinced that they were teammates. He was once again being too naive for his own good. 
It was in this moment that Ryan saw an opportunity to take Bam hostage. But just like last time, Endorsey was too fast for him to even get close. This was part of the second lesson that Endorsey wanted to teach. In order to protect someone, you shouldn't hesitate to hurt others. You have to resolve to kill. Thing that Bam needed to accept if he was going to climb the tower with Rachel. The thing is, Endorsey was well aware that that just wasn't part of Bam's nature. So instead, she just wanted Bam to give up. She wanted him to stop following Rachel and go find his own happiness. She is his happiness! Bam knew that everything Endodice was saying was true. But that didn't mean that he had to accept it. For Bam, everything that was precious to him was already on this floor. The relationships he built and the friends he made were all yes. here. Yes, and ignore if Rachel. If the tower meant leaving those behind, then what was the point of even making it to the top? Everyone says that all you could possibly desire was up there. But how... Bam is like, everything he wants is already around him. So him is just, <laughs> the wish for him is basically already there. He's just existing and hanging out with his friends and having a good time. It's the journey that he's enjoying while everyone's obsessed in the goal. How could anyone say that something they've never seen was the most amazing thing to exist? Bam just didn't see the point in fighting over something like that. If he did have to fight, it would only be to protect that which he thought was worth protecting. It was once she is not worth protecting. that Endodice just couldn't understand. For someone who had to fight for everything they've ever wanted, it was a completely impractical state of mind. In the end, she was frustrated because Bam was walking down a path where he would inevitably have to hurt someone else. And that someone else is gonna be him. I don't know, and Dorsey comes from a place of like, again, kill or be killed, survival no matter what. But Bam doesn't know anything. He understands nothing about his tower. So if someone needs to suffer, at the end of the day, Bam would rather himself suffer than anyone else. To her, the easiest thing to do would be to just abandon Rachel. Yes! But no matter how much yes! she expressed that that was the case, Bam simply couldn't turn his back on her. Now, part of the reason that Endorsey was being so persistent was because she had a certain fondness towards Bam's innocence. So mm, when Bam made does. up his mind to follow Rachel, it was pretty much as if she'd just been dumped. <laughs> You should not have said that. So these two said she got dumped. And then Endorsey heard that and just popped off and just killed them. Clearly, Rachel was the most important to Bam. And as infuriating as that. This is, this is terrible. Bam walking away, saying Rachel is more important. Ugh. 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 It's gonna get worse. Trust me, it's, it's, it's gonna get even worse, bro. It's, I, I know it's gonna get where this bitch is gonna be acting like she's on a cr cripple in a wheelchair and everyone's gonna protect her and then she's climbing the tower. You already know this is gonna be disastrous, man. Like, are we ever gonna get justice in this world? I feel like we're not getting justice. I feel like the cliche of the, the evil people keep, keep fucking, you know, they, they keep moving forward and then the good people keep getting, you know, pushed down. Like, come on! That was, and Dudasi knew that there was nothing she could do about it. So rather than chase after him, she simply let him go. Now, I could just be grasping at straws here, but I found it very interesting that in the anime, the blast mark that the ignition weapon left was shaped yeah. like a heart. It could just be a- Huh. No, I see it. That's a heart. There's a dip here, yeah. Is that a coincidence? I don't know, but it kind of looks like it. A coincidence of design. Or perhaps it could be something more symbolic to Endorsey's personal heartbreak. Especially since there's even a line that goes through the heart. Are we reaching? Are, are we schizo? Maybe Endorsey's heart got broken. Bomb broke her heart. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was Maybe. intentional. Anyway, while all that was happening, Rachel was lured out of her lighthouse and taken hostage by Ho. While Ho was waiting for Bomb to arrive, we got a closer look into the reason for his descent into madness. Ho found Bomb's innate talent to be unfair. The way it is he unfair. Was able to learn Shinsu so fast made it seem as if God favored him over anyone else. Probably, if God exists, then yeah, he did. I'm sorry, this show literally literally said it. Like one of the most important things in this show is just like luck. You're either born with a talent or you're not. I'm sorry, it's a brutal reality check. He couldn't help but wonder why it was that Bam was blessed with so much talent when he's he a main character. I'm sorry. From Ho's perspective. He had everything taken away, yet was only given a fraction of the power that Bam was. It well, no one really knows about Bam's actual past. Because all we know is he just emerged out of the rubbles and saw Rachel. But who knows what happened before that? 
right? And Bomb is 100% gonna have some kind of fucked up backstory. Like, there is no shot that a main character that just immersed into rubbles like this in such an important, you know, key figure and irregular to this tower, there is no way that the stuff that happened before what we see in episode 1 won't be covered, and that stuff will probably be more shocking and tragic than whatever Ho had to go through is my, is my guess. If God wasn't going to take anything in exchange for Bomb's power, then Ho felt that it was his job to make things right. Bob needed to experience the same form of misery that he had. That was the only way that things could become fair. And this is the mentality of haters online and crab bucket mentality, right? And this is why in society, nothing good will happen. Because shitty people like this exist where if others succeed and they see them like succeeding and they see themselves not, they feel the need to pull them down, right? You ever be in a friend circle? I'm not sure if you guys can relate, but if you've ever had something good going on for yourself, the good friends will be there rooting and supporting you and be motivated. The quote unquote shitty friends, right? They were never friends in the beginning. They'll be jealous and they'll be like, oh, this guy's moving forward in life and they're doing stuff and it feels like I'm being left behind. So I'm going to be hateful and, and not give a fuck because misery loves company. Some people don't like sometimes relationship friendships. It's not even friendship. If you're true friends, you would wish the other person to seek better uh, opportunities for themselves. But quite most times, these friendships are just pity patter where they all just like losers exist in a group and they all can just be losers together. And like it like copes and like it makes them rationalize in their mind why it's fine where they are placed in life. This is called like crab bucket mentality. When you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one tries to climb out of the bucket, the other crabs will pull them down and this is why us as a human population were so easily grouped and divided and conquered by the upper class to fight amongst themselves another fine example of this tipping culture how many times you go to a fucking restaurant they ask for a tip even though they didn't do shit you don't tip and they get mad at you and the reasoning is well servers don't get paid any money right servers don't get paid any money therefore the customers the clients need to offset that but then you gotta ask why is does this system exist why does the working class need to be pitted against the other working class to compensate for the money that the business owners that the upper ruling class has structured right the ruling class can simply make the monkeys fight amongst themselves crab bucket mentality monkeys can never unite and fight together we will simply be divided just like crabs to his surprise though the first person to arrive at the scene was actually quant which is where things start to get a lot different first off quant was only able to find them because rachel had used one of her lighthouses to create a i thought that kun also mentioned this did he specifically say did he not hint the scenario out to quant he did right for him to follow then Quant was acting a lot more confident with the situation at hand. It didn't really matter that Ho had a hostage because Quant could easily take him out before he could even react. That's where the safety zone comes into play. If you recall from last episode, the yeah. safety zone was an area of the stage where Quant couldn't do anything to the regulars. All Ho had to do was cross that line and he'd be safe. The thing is, Quant would have been fast enough to prevent that from happening had the spear bearers not interfered. They threw a spear at Quant just as- The revolutionaries?! Attack. Not only did this force Quant to back off, but it also gave Ho enough time to get into the safety zone. And to make matters worse, the spear bearers had also taken a couple hostages themselves. Their plan was to use their teammates as bait in order to eliminate Quant. I mean, with- <laughs> Only a genius like Pericule could ever come up with an idea like this. God, long live the revolutionaries. Hostages on both sides now. Quant's options just became very limited. <laughs> okay. Ho also had a lot to consider as well because things weren't going anywhere close to how he had planned. Really, the only option now was to go along with the Spare Bear's revolution. So what he did was create a situation- Kinda kinda mad that the revolutionaries got cut off like this. I don't know, they're fun. The revolutionaries are like pretty fun to me. I, I kinda wanted to see them get highlighted more in the anime, man. Like this scene like seems hilarious. Situation ...where it would be impossible for Quant to save everyone. If Quant went to attack the Spare Bearers, then Ho threatened to kill Rachel. And Quant couldn't save Rachel first because they were in the safety zone. It was a very annoying situation for Quant to be in. So, rather than come up with a solution himself, he instead made it so that the regulars would have to choose what they were going to do next. Basically, Quant said that he wasn't going to do anything. The caveat was that if anyone died, then he would kill everyone else. <laughs> Sounds like a Quant answer, yeah. 
Anyone dies here? Well, I mean, Ho died. You didn't do shit after that, though. It made it so that literally no one was safe. Clearly, there was a lot more at stake in this situation than what the anime had shown. Of course, Rachel was the most at risk because she was in an area that Quant couldn't get to. So, when Bam finally arrived, it became his job to rescue Rachel while Quant would take care of the spare bearers. That was the plan they came up with when Bam was frozen by Quant's Shinsu attack. And he what copied Quant that immediately. Exactly was give Bam a bit of Shinsu that was manipulated in a way that could freeze any target. If Bam wanted to save Rachel, then he needed to imitate this exact- Oh, that's what it was doing. Freezing. I thought that it was just like an overload of Shinsu that just like overwhelmed the person and they were like paralyzed. But it was actually the act of freezing, huh? Also here. Feel it, the Shinsu flowing through in your body. Keep the flow going on. Aim for one bang. One room. I'm surprised that the anime didn't, you know, go into the whole bang mechanic, but maybe in season two they will. Flow and release it in a single bang. It was the only thing that Quant could do to help save Rachel. Well, that's what he wanted Bam to think anyway. What Quant was really doing was giving Bam false hopes that he could go and save the other hostages. If Bam was distracted with trying to save Rachel, then Quant would have enough time to take care of the spare bearers. The thing is, Quant never actually believed that Bam could save Rachel. The Shinsu technique he showed him was one that he himself took hundreds of years to master. Hundreds of years. And Bomb did it in an instant. Irregular. Built different. There was no chance that a rookie like Bomb would be able to imitate it after only seeing it once. But he did! So, as you'd expect, it was extremely shocking to see Bomb do exactly that. Quant began to think that perhaps Bomb really was the monster that Ho was making him out to be. He now, is! Before the big fight between Endorosi and Quant, there was a few scenes that showed what happened to Ryan and Hong. Hong simply wasn't fast enough to land an attack on Endorosi. She and was died. much stronger than he could have ever imagined. And that only made him hate her more. She was given all the strength and power that she could hope for, yet would rather choose to betray her own teammates instead of choosing to take the test head on. Well, betray her own teammates... Well, let's not get it twisted. Just because we're on the same team B here doesn't mean that we're teammates. Again, like, our real team has already been established in the roster, and that's why we're doing this. To him, she was just an evil girl unworthy of the title and power that she'd been given. And Dorisi wasn't really bothered by these words, though. You're just evil. Yeah, I know. I'm a sinful woman. <laughs> you're not wrong. I kind of... If you're from Ryan or the, the Knight's perspective, this would feel extremely stupid, like... What the fuck? You're one of the strongest in our team and you're betraying us like this? Like, this is messed up. I would totally understand. She was well aware of what she was already. Everyone who's ever left her has always said that same thing. So, in the end, it was something that she was used to. That's not to say that she was scared of taking on Quant, though. In fact, Endodacy believed that she could beat Quant in a fight if she could get rid of his one-use limit of Shinsu. So, that's exactly where she was heading to next. In the meantime, Ho was giving his whole backstory behind why he hated Bam. Ultimately, it boiled down to an overwhelming sense of envy. A feeling of unfairness that stemmed from God choosing Bam to have all the power. Even Quant now recognized this to be the case. But when he saw that Bam would shed tears for a friend who betrayed him, he found it ridiculous that Bam was the one chosen to foster such incredible power. Talent goes to those that least want it, right? A lot of people probably crave these power quants thinking this is stupid. How did all this talent and power go to this pacifist kiss that doesn't even want the power, right? That's actually very resembling, like, in real life too. Like, it happens a lot where the people that want something the most are quite often, they just don't have that special factor. And the other people that never even want in the beginning, they're just so talented. You just think that the world is so unfair. It's just RNG at the end of the day. You see... Quant knew that someone so strong wouldn't be able to maintain such lofty ideals when climbing the tower. Just like in Dodacy, Quant became well aware of the lonely path that Bam was headed down. And Is that supposed to be future Bam? At the top of the tower? With, you know, Yuri Zahad's weapon thing? Well, I don't know what the three things here are. I don't know if these designs matter, but like, is that Black Mart and the three other weapons that Yuri also had in her treasure? Who, who knows? And once again... It was something that those who knew the true nature of the tower just couldn't understand. Now, when Endodacy had finally arrived, she laid out the two options that Bam had left. He could either help her beat Quant and continue up the tower with Rachel, or betray the team and cause her to fail so that she won't leave him behind again. Hmm. The former would undoubtedly lead him towards suffering similar to what he experienced today, but Rachel would be happy. The latter would mean that Rachel would have to give up on her dreams and it would Good. be entirely Bam's fault. But he would be there with Rachel. 
So whatever choice he was going to make, we're fucked regardless. He, now, he would eventually decide to help Rachel reach her goal. Reason being that his memories of her at her happiest was when she was looking towards the stars. Yeah, and not you, he bro. He wants to be the reason that Rachel lost one of the things that she cherishes the most. Bam now knew from Ho that those who lose what's most important to them often lose their reason to live. It was in this moment that Bam's reason for climbing the tower. And that line is so important here. What did he say? Them often lose their. A little bit back. A little bit back. What did he say? He didn't want to be the reason that Rachel lost one of the things that she cherishes yeah. the most. Bam now knew from Ho that those who lose what's most important to them often lose their reason to live. You hear that? Those that lose what's most important to them often lose their reasons to live. And this is why it's such a dangerous thing to live for other people. The moment that you stake all your happiness and your reasoning, your fulfillments, your purpose in life to other people, living for your family, living for your friends, living for your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatnot. Once that's gone, what do you have left? Genuinely. What do you have left? You have nothing. And that's why people become so depressed and they become so dependent on others. And that's why I think it's so important that you yourself are the most important things in your life. Doesn't mean that you need to be a narcissist and, you know, deny other people. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. It's important to have a community of friends and families and loved ones and cherish those. But like, you should be your own most important person. If you don't love yourself, if you don't live for yourself, when shit like this happens, what are you going to do? I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna end up like Ho. It was in this moment that Bam's reason for climbing the tower changed from simply following Rachel. He now wanted to help Rachel achieve her dreams. And you did. No. He did. Straight up. This is all a ploy. Every one of this bit was Yu Hansung placing Bam and Rachel in this position for Rachel to betray Bam so that Rachel could become the star. Rachel achieve her dreams. This bitch. Now, in the fight between Endodacy and Quant, there were more than a couple things that Quant had to look out for. Not only did Endodacy have the ignition weapon, but she also had a reel that she was using to try and grab Quant's tank with. She would lead an attack with her reel, then force Quant to dodge. That reel the never gets brought into the anime. Of course, a single hit from an ignition weapon wasn't enough to do significant damage. In fact, even with Quant using no Shinsu at all, both Bam and Endodacy's power combined still wouldn't be enough to beat him in a direct fight. I would hope so, because, like, Quant is a ranker. They need to make sure, like, these tutorial characters, there's a power gap between them and rankers. The only reason Quant lost was because Endodacy tricked him into believing the tag was where she said it was. Now, what the anime didn't show was that Endodacy and Bam did in fact capture the tag with a combination of her skill with the real plus Bam's freezing ability. So, it's not like she just walked up and took it from him. She actually had to work pretty hard to capture it. That being said, any other ranker would have just steamrolled right through them. Quant just seems to make the rankers look weak. But yeah, that was pretty much the end of the hide and seek test and the end of episode 9. Okay. It was a little bit of a longer cut content, but there was definitely some important themes worth mentioning, especially regarding Bomb's turning point plus Endodice's development. And Serena anyway, stuff that's too. That's pretty much all for today. I guess there's no point to, you know, focus too much on Serena and her, you know, whole character. I mean, he did, you know, mention that. Guys, go give Mr. Anime a like on this video. And we're getting closer and closer to getting caught up in Tower God again. We're done on Patreon and Twitch. You guys can go there to see the rest of the episodes. And remember, we will be uploading one episode every day until we lead up until this Sunday, which is Season 2, Episode 1. I'll see you then.